to Scott. I'm going to go to 1 Peter chapter 1. I'm going to read beginning at verse 23. My intention is not to keep you long. <laughs> I want you to have faith in God, but not in me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> Say amen if you're there. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible. Being born again is just something you pick up and put down depending on what day of the week it is our manner of conversation, our manner of dress, our manner of, of speech and everything needs to be influenced by the presence of God. The Bible says that God winked at ignorance once. There's an expectation of improvement and growth from all of us. Him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, him that is sin and the wages of sin is death. By the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. Listen, 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 because he qualifies. The words are way more important than that, that flesh that you're dressing up and per, putting perfume on. And, hello? For all flesh is as grass. The next time you want to get all dressed up, just go dress up your yard. And all the glory of man is as the flower of grass. The grass withereth and the flower falleth away. But the word of the Lord endureth forever. And this is the word by which the gospel is preached Amen. unto you. Amen. Let's place our Bibles down. Let's ask the presence of the Lord to come into this place in our hearts and our minds. Jesus, we love you and we need you. We need your help. Lord, we live in a, a carnal, crazy world. But Lord, we want to be spiritual. We want to be mindful. We want to feel the unction, Lord God, of your spirit. Lord, we want the instruction of your word to orchestrate our steps, our conduct, Lord Jesus. Help us tonight as we endeavor to draw nigh unto you. And everybody said in Jesus' name. Jesus. Amen. You can be seated. Praise God. I want to quickly ask each and every one of you to please continue to pray for Sister Loretta. And uh, I'm asking God for a miracle there. Amen. 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 The pastor received a phone call late one night and was informed that his church was on fire. He quickly got dressed and drove to the church. And when he arrived, he discovered his church building was engulfed in flames and was a total loss. He stood there with other members of the church and they, they wept and hugged and prayed. And as he glanced around and noticed there was a certain gentleman standing on the corner observing all that was taking place. This is a man that the pastor had visited many times and and invited to church and over the years had worked to try to win him. However, the man had never stepped one foot into the church building while it stood. The pastor, a bit taken back by his presence, walked over to the gentleman and said, well, I never saw you in the church before. And the gentleman replied, well, the church had never been on fire before. John the Baptist speaking in Luke 3 and 16. When he baptized people, he was a pre-runner, a forerunner. So we baptized under repentance. Repentance is a blessing. Repentance is important. Repentance is as important right now as it was then. Saying unto them all, I indeed baptize you with water, but one mightier than I cometh, which latcheth of shoes, I am not worthy Unloose, but he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Being on fire is not just being excited. 
being on fire is not just all of a sudden you want to lift up your hands and worship while you're in this building. Being on fire is being fueled to burn off all that's carnal. Being on fire is endeavoring to get closer to God, to, to, to bury yourself in his word that you may take on more of the form of him. The fire denotes carrying your cross with a passion, carrying your cross with determination. Salvation includes baptism in Jesus' name for the remission of sins, but never mistake, your flesh still must die every day. That moment that you fulfill that is not the ending. It is rather the beginning of a conduct and a process. Jesus was clear. Crosses have to be carried daily and not worshiped once and then left behind. Your flesh is an issue and it requires repentance every day. He said in Luke 9 and 23, and he said to them all, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross sometimes. Only the day he's baptized daily and follow me. One of the greatest markers of being a real believer is not a cross around your neck, not a cross on the wall, but the cross of commitment and separation under the Lord Jesus Christ. And sadly, preaching this way shuts down most listeners today because they want a Christless cross, they want a bloodless cross, and the last thing they really want is to carry a cross. <sighs> a lot of times we use what we've been through as an excuse that you now have to be gentle with me because I've had pain in my life. You, oh, let me tell you, the greatest lie is when someone tells you because you've been through something that now really following the rules doesn't matter to you. You're, you're, you're excused of it. Now, we all got pain pans. Now, listen, it may be someone else's fault that you went through hell, but it'll be your fault if you go to hell. Mm -hmm. Your enemy isn't the person putting you through it. Your enemy's going to be you if you don't make it through it. Here's the problem with the church world. Jesus answered and said unto them, you do err not knowing the scriptures nor the power of God. Some of you know the power of God, but without the, some of you know the scriptures, but you don't know the power of God because you can't know that without the Holy Ghost. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Bethlehem was God with us. Calvary was God for us, but Pentecost is God in us. If you don't get the Holy Ghost within you, evidence of speaking other tongues, you're powerless. You're powerless. What is the gospel? The death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. That's the gospel. That is the crux of it all. That is the most important. That is the beginning. That is the, without that, you don't even go any further. I'm thankful that when Nicodemus stole away that night and got with Jesus, that we can know clearly that I must be born again. But for the sake of my hopefully expedited sermon tonight, my message, in my first birth, now, like you, my life wasn't easy. Um, my first birth, birth uh, uh, there were a lot of things that I didn't have a choice in the matter. I, I, saying they were given to me is an order, a, a, a kind of an understatement. I, I didn't get to choose none of it. It was forced upon me. I did not choose my country, state, or city. I didn't get to pick my birth year, my birth month, or my birth day. I did not pick my ears. Watch it now, a sensitive area. My eye color, my height, my shoe size, my receding hair color. I didn't get to choose my parents, my siblings, or my nationality. Kind of makes you realize you're really not in 
control much. <laughs> All these variables are genetically given to us and through no choice of our own. And it's funny, while I'm at peace with the majority of them, now that last name that was given to me long before there was ever anybody famous with my last name. I suffered in those years of immaturity by the last name given to me at my first birth. It created moments where I was hesitant to speak up. In fact, I, I was educated in a country where they call you by your last name. A certain four years of my life being educated in Europe, I was never called Stephen, which most people mess it up because I have the European spelling of the PH. And so the angst of every time my name was called Stephen. To even an eight-year-old would cause me to look at my mom and say, fix that. But in school, I was known as Crow. <laughs> to utter my last name of Crow in my childhood would undoubtedly bring the customary calls of Caw, Caw. I'm pretty sure that while silly now, it was almost sheer horror to me as a child. And I believe I've heard every version, variation of crow calls known the man by the time I was 10 years old. You add to that my tall, lanky stature, gangly arms, big nose and feet, and I just about held a lot of contempt for my last name. But thankfully, I, through my walk with God and reading the Bible and becoming obedient to its word, I was introduced to the opportunity of a second birth. It's not many things in life you get do-overs, but <laughs> in John 3, and Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, or truly, truly, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Being born again is repentance, uh, baptism in the name of Jesus for the remission of sins, and receiving the Holy Ghost, uh, evidence of speaking other tongues that way. There's no doubt. Uh, there's no fear. There's no worry. I know I got it. Throughout Scripture, they would use that. Hey, they got the Holy Ghost just like we did. How do you know? Because they can spoke in tongues just like we did. How can a man be born again when he is old? Can he enter the second time to his mother's womb and be born? And Jesus answered, Verily I say unto thee, except a man be born of the water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Because my first birth, that which is born of flesh is flesh, and my second birth, that which is born of spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto ye, thee, ye must be born again. And so when Peter was called upon and stood forth in that crowd and said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, for the promises unto you and to your children, all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. As an adult, I'm thankful for that second chance. <laughs> In my second birth, when I was born again, there was open to me an opportunity to choose to change some things. <laughs> my second birth opens up an opportunity to make some great choices. It hands me a do-over that I, I can make the decision to do things different. I'm at the level, I'm at the age, and I'm at the maturity where I have possibilities and opportunities that I can make some changes. I, I look back over my first birth, oh, man, I wish I could go back and play that game again or do that situation over. Because with this second birth, it tells me in 2 Corinthians, Paul saying, therefore, if any man or anyone being Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. I don't know about you, but I like a clean chalkboard. I like a clean slate. I like the opportunity that I got a second chance to do it better. 
There's so many times that when some of us got some mental and emotional scars, I just wish I could do that over. Well, I can't go back to my first birth and do it over, but I got a second birth. I got to hold it that I can do some things different. And because of my new birth experience, there are some things that I can decide for myself, and so can you when it comes to the kingdom of God. And firstly, let me just, just call it right out. The enemy of my soul, the devil, cannot stop me. That bully down the street when I was a kid, I can't undo that. But devil, today you got to get off me. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I don't, I, you don't understand. I don't need to call my dad. He already did the job. Uh, see, now, now let me bring that one home for you. I, 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 see, see, in England... England's a little different. You graduate at 16 over there. Don't get all excited about it. The year I turned 16, we moved back here and found out I got two more years of school. <laughs> you got to understand my life has been nothing but a pounding. So anyway, my, 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 you know, I was about 13 in England, and, and you have to understand, I got to be careful here. Um, I'll... I'll I was dating lady girls that were 16, that were had jobs. In fact, my girlfriend at the time was her name was Dawn. She would go by my I'm getting up to go to school. She's on her way to work and she'd yell up. We had a two-story house and she would yell up to, to the window, hi, Steve, and go to work. So anyway, but she's out there in the workforce and she's got grown men. You know, but she's my girlfriend, you know, as much as you can be a girlfriend. I was 13. So anyway, I, I, I'm outside one day, and all of a sudden, this 23-year-old guy shows up. And he said, hey, where's the yank? Well, there was only one of me in my neighborhood. <laughs> See, I, I know what persecution is. Oh, yeah, I know what it means to be like the only one in the crowd. And all of a sudden, and they're like, why? I come to let him know Don's my girlfriend. And I come to whoop him to prove it. And I'm like, okay, well, you ain't got to whoop me. I'm leaving right now. <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm like, okay. And then he came to whoop me. I'm 13. He's like 23. I'm like, okay, I'm going to the house. Well, he was outside belly aching as I walked in the house. And my dad's like, what is this commotion? Said that dude right there is going to kick my butt because I'm dating Don. I've never seen a grown man at 23 run as fast as that dude just ran when he saw my dad. Okay, that's fair. Let's go. My dad stepped out. So you have to understand now, my view of things is now in my second birth, my dad already went and paid the price for me. Devil, you're already beat. You're already defeated. Hallelujah. Hell has no say. Now listen to me. That's all fun and games and that's fun. But I want to tell you something. Stop letting hell have a say in your life. Stop, stop being on the fringes of worldliness. Stop getting that word and find out what pleases God and jump into that stuff. Stop being, give, give your heavenly father every reason. The devil, you can't. But if I kept going to that neighborhood and kept running over there, and, and Bill going to get a hold of me. Some of you wonder why you go through problems. Start getting godly and leave that ungodly stuff behind. Look, you have to understand, so there, are, there are some things that, and I'm not going to get into all the, all, all the holiness standards and all that kind of stuff right now. You have got to find out, you know, what kind of relationship do you want with God? That's the privilege of the second birth. That's the opportunity of how close do you really want to get. If you have the mindset, let me see how little I can do. Well, then you know what? Don't bug people and argue about your stance. Let's get to the place where we swap out our mentality of how much can I do? How close can I get? How on fire can I possibly become living for God? Because that was the point of my second birth. I don't want to play around with this thing. This is eternity and here. Matthew 16, 8, he says, and I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I, I was born into this church. Ah, <laughs> you don't understand. I belong here. I was born into this thing. 
You can't abort me. You can't stop me. You can't kick me out. I don't care if you don't like me. I was born here. I belong here. And I, 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 hope, I, hope, you, I hope you keep shouting. I hope you keep shouting. I belong here. I can play for five minutes or two hours. I didn't quite get the same shout there. I can study the word of God as long as I want. Ain't nothing going to stop me getting close to my heavenly father. I can be faithful as much as I desire. I dare some of you to swap your mentality about doing minimums and start finding some maximums. Hey, parents, let me tell you something. You better start showing your children maximums because their minimums are going to leave them right outside. The scripture tells us to covet earnestly the best gifts. Paul's 1 Corinthians 12, 31, but covet earnestly the best gifts, and yet I show you a more excellent way. Some, you know what? Some of you need to get out of the excuse way and start the excellent way. Oh, you don't know what I've been through. Man. I am not being unsympathetic. I am not. I am not. Everybody has pain. Everybody has anger to deal with. But I'm going to tell you something. If you will forgive and get over that anger, you're the one who's set free, not them. Angry people are seldom going to be anointed people. Whatever you ask, seek and knock for, it will be given in the kingdom of God. So why aren't you praying and asking? Why aren't you seeking and fasting? Why aren't you finding... Wait a minute, if the word says I can do that, I want that. Now, I'm going to give you something to think about. I'm not going to go over this too much. The Bible talks about men and women's hair. I'm not going to go deep. But it does say, hey, ladies, if you don't cut your hair, you have power with the angels. Men, you ought to have cut hair, because if you don't, it's a shame. Now, don't get into the Samson, because I know you don't have a clue about what a Nazarite vow is. And if you want to talk about a Nazarite vow, well, there's a whole lot more needs to change in your life. So, ladies, I want to encourage you. You grab that uncut hair the next time there's a sick person in your home. The next time you got a child that's struggling and you lay that uncut hair over that child. You, see, I'm telling you right now, Sister Jessica, the hell don't got a chance when that baby got a mama that's got protection over her because she's living with uncut hair. I don't know why. It's just in the word. It's just there. I don't understand the physics, the chemistry, or the biology of it. I don't understand everything in the Bible. I know it's there, and I want our ladies to have power with the angels. I don't care if y'all don't shout over that. Oh, it's for your glory. Go read it. Go read it. Understand, you can go in the history books. And they're passed on some of these Professors and Marvin Treese, okay, not someone that remembers him, connected to, oh, he's passed on. He has his own publications. He's passed on. He was involved in the archaeology, and he can go back and show you that all the archaeology of the Israelites show all ladies with long, uncut hair. Now, we have to understand, not, not every nationality can grow long, flowing locks. It's not about long and flowing. It's about simply uncut. And so the un understanding is, is the moment you decide, I'm done, the angels can come. Just like when a man decides that they're going to lift up hands without wrath and doubting. 
all of a sudden they can step into a realm spiritually. Oh, I'm talking about the power and the opportunities of a second birth. You have to understand it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Oh, you don't understand. Every dad here wants their son to inherit. But if they can't handle it, daddy ain't going to give it to them. Fear not, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Luke 12 and 32. We have been given access to a whole new set of variables that are self-determinative. I couldn't determine all those things I listened to you. But right now, in your walk with God, in your new birth, it is your choice, young people, adults, old people, what you will be in the kingdom of God. How much do you want to grow in God? How much do you want to know about God? How much spiritual strength do you desire? How faithful do you want to be to the house of God? How important is prayer time? How important is praise time? How more important is the preaching time and response time? I can't change that I was born in Wyoming. It didn't impress you one bit, did it, Layla? Most of our young people couldn't find it on a map. And you know what? It ain't going to impede their career in any way. But I tell you, it matters being born again in the church. It matters about being born again in the kingdom of God. You see, in your second birth, how helpful do you want to be to those around you? You see, how many knows what you were like in your first birth? Y'all will just like Nehemiah right now. You got, a, you got two people trying to take care of your carcass. Feeding you, spending money on you, changing diapers every other hour, keeping mom and dad, brother, sister awake at night. Whole house is geared for you. And I tell you, when you get mature in this church is when you start honestly becoming, become caretakers of the new and you start worrying about my god let's take care of the babies let's take let's take care of those that are hurting and wounded how big a blessing do you want to be today in your second birth how much do you want to give how much do you want to pray how supportive do you want to be though to those around you how big of an assistant do you want to be to the pastor how big of an assistant do you want to be to the first lady you want to be a leader a mentor a teacher a son to, what do you want to be in this second birth the devil can't stop you the world can't stop you it's all up to you he wants to give you the kingdom he wants to give you the kingdom You see, Jesus talked about people that hunger and thirsted, blessed. In Matthew 5, blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Can I help you? I get it. We all have situations and we have struggles and we have life problems that come with that first birth. But if you'll start focusing on this second birth, if you'll start paying attention, you're going to find your prayer returns to your own bosom. That when you take care of his business, he's going to take care of your business. Oh, that we had a renewed hunger and revival in the church for righteousness. God, oh, I, I, no, I heard someone right. Oh, whoa. that means laying down some habits. Yeah, but look what you but look what you get in return. Laying down some addictions, but look what you get in return. So many people got such a tight grip on something that you don't want to let go, but you don't realize how much more you could get if you could let that go. Jesus said this in Luke 13, and he went through the cities and villages teaching and journeying toward Jerusalem. Then said one of them, Lord, are there few that be saved? And he said unto them, strive to enter in at the straight gate. For many, I say unto you, will seek to enter in and shall not be able. Not because it's difficult. He made the way. He set it for us an open door. Why is it difficult? We hold tighter to our first birth 
than ourselves. Well, I got rights. Okay. You can't hurt my feelings. Okay. You, you, didn't, you didn't really study or know what the gospel is really all about, the death, burial, and resurrection. You've missed the fact that it is more blessed to give. Unless if you don't forgive, you won't be forgiven. You have to understand all of it comes together. See, you can hold on to a grudge or hold on to the world as long as you want to. Or you can press forward in the things of God as much as you want to. You can overcome anything if you'll pray about it. You can overcome every pain, hurt, problem, situation if you will give it to God. There's no limit to things available to you if you'll trust God with it. I'm not saying to say it didn't hurt. I'm just going to say, hey, I got healed. Mm. I'm not going to tell you to deny that you ain't been through something. No, in fact, your fact is you went through it. That's your testimony. You can't have a testimony without a test. You can't find your purpose without a problem. Because the question really comes back to each and every one of us. How hungry for the kingdom of God and righteousness are you? This is going to sting. If you're trying to do the minimums just to be involved in the functions of the church, you've missed it. You're the player that gets cut about two weeks before the final cut because they realize you're just there for the uniform. You're just there for the uniform. Mm, are you hearing what I'm saying? You see, it's hard to eat mom's dinner if you've been filling your stomach all day eating junk food. I hated when my mom said that to me. Because I felt I could eat that junk food and still sit down, but how many times I got myself sick trying to do that. But don't we do it in our lives? We fool around with the world and not give God the attention due, and then we walk into it, and we want such a powerful move. There needs to be something about us. There needs to be something about each and every one of us that decides, I don't want to fill my life with the junk of this world because I want to enhance the hunger for the things of God. When I, I, want, I want to attribute and I want to develop and I want to focus on developing and having a hunger for God. And if I keep filling my life, if I keep sitting in front of a TV, which is programming you, you have to find out the spirit behind all those programs you're watching. And I don't care if you're watching religious stuff. Half that stuff's tainted with false doctrine anyway. It's going to be hard for you to get messed up if you just get in the Word and get in the book and get in your house. You do realize that most of the stuff you're caught up in wasn't even around 7,500 years ago. People have been trying to live for God for 2,000 years. But the greatest problem we have today is our inventions that have just in the last, you kids, you, oh, you ain't taking my phone. It's not about taking the phone, it's where the phone's going to take you. Don't you take my music from me. I'm trying to take nothing from you, but where's that music going to take you? Oh, it don't matter what I listen to. Oh, Anybody here ever mess up all by yourself? Well, I can't because I got to like that. But I, every time I messed up bad, I had a friend leading me that way. Back to the Bible talks about Ammon had a friend. Oh, we don't we, we don't like this kind of stuff because it literally talks about being real. How many wants to get real? A church that gets real can have real church. There, the promises in the kingdom are promises given to those that overcome, those that press through, those, those who are faithful in the face of trouble, those who get to that place they refuse to be stopped. The message I preached on Sunday was a simple message of a young lady who refused to be stopped. 
She had a man that had to spell it out for her, just like we need it spelled out for us sometimes. We need reminded every now and then, you are in the fight. Yes. You are in the fight. By grace are you saved through faith. It is a gift of God. Yes. James lets you know, hey, man, I'll show you my faith by my works. No, I'm going to live in a way you can see my faith. How can you? Because I'm carrying my cross. I can't be worldly and godly at the same time. Now, the world will tell you you can mix it, but God's going to let you know. They draw nigh to me with their mouth, but their lives, their hearts are far from me. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I'm talking about those who refuse to be stopped. The kingdom of God transcends everything else. We all have the option to be the David standing in the face of a Saul. I know you don't think I can do it. And I know you think I'm ill-equipped. And I know you think I can't beat this giant in my life. And I know that you think, but I, and I can't use your armor. I can't do it your way because God's brought me up this way. But let me tell you something. I'm going to take what little God has given me and I'm going to give it back to him. And my little slingshot and my rock is going to be the giant that had you with all your armor and all your stuff. See, the only difference was the mindset of who was committed to God and who wasn't. You want to get powerful in the kingdom of God? Quit thinking you need anymore. I'll tell you what you need. Just get faithful to pleasing God, seeking his face. Kill the lion. Kill the bear. You'll get the giant. You know, see, even in the kingdom of God, you can get a praise break in prison. You don't understand. I've been locked down. That sounds like praise time for me. Oh, things are getting shut down. Things are getting locked down. Things are getting turned down. What do I need to do? I'm going to turn to God and turn the world upside down. See, in the kingdom of God, the lame walk, the blind see, lepers are healed, sinners are cleansed. I don't know about you, but I'll take this second birth. Mm -hmm. In the kingdom of God, you and I can have prophetic experiences while being incarcerated and imprisoned in this land. I'm going to bring this to a close and try to help some of you make sense of this. If you got your Bible, wave it. Hold it up. <laughs> I see all the phones. It's okay. I got an iPad. Okay. That's awesome. Everybody go like this. You've got a Bible, the ability to pray. Now, I'm, I read about a family. Let me put that down. They were driving from Fort Lauderdale to Tampa, Florida. As far as the eye could see, they could see the orchards of orange trees were just loaded with fruit. Enjoying their vacation, they stopped for breakfast. After seeing all the oranges, the dad just said, you know what? I want some orange juice. So the waitress comes to the table and says, you know what? I just like some scrambled eggs, toast, and some orange juice. To his shock, the waitress said, I'm sorry. I can't bring you any orange juice. Our orange juice machine is broken. At first, the father was completely dumbfounded. I am surrounded by orchards and orchards of fresh oranges ready to be picked. He knew there was oranges in the kitchen because there were orange slices garnishing his plate. What's the problem? No juice? No. They were surrounded by thousands of gallons of juice. The problem was they'd become dependent on a machine to get it. Let's stand. Hey, elders, we got to teach these children how to get orange juice. We, we got to show these kids how to have real church. I, 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 I can only reinforce what you're teaching at home. If your children ain't learning to pray from you by, at home, 
I ain't the problem. God isn't the issue. Some of us are like those guys can have no orange juice. I ain't got no machine to squeeze. Oh, no. And sadly, believers, we get just like that. We're surrounded by Bibles. We have Bibles in our homes, in our cars, on our iPads, on our phones. But if something should happen to the Sunday morning preaching service, they'd have no nourishment for their souls because they're not squeezing at home. If they skip a Wednesday night, they settle for worldly entertainment rather than opening up that Bible and having prayer. Experiencing the Holy Ghost is not always about a supercharged feeling of worship in a service or an event. Now, I, I, granted, I, I, I'll tell you what, I love being in this church with you folks. We've got something going on here that's beginning. We, we, I understand it, but, but I understand that it's going to, to keep your car running, you're going to need some maintenance. You're going to need to change all. Let's do a little serious church maintenance right here. Let, let, let's get where we really live. Let's get on the inside here. We need to rediscover the power of yielding ourselves daily to be a conduit rather than just a reservoir. Brief encounters on a Sunday or Wednesday, though they help, they do not constitute a relationship. You can see the Spirit work on a Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday. You can feel that working among us. But in order to truly know the Spirit of God, you got to get in His Word. It's got to get in you and it's got to be daily. First Corinthians, Paul reminds us, watch ye, every man, look around. I don't want the move of God to be ten, dependent on spiritual, sensitive ladies. I refuse to have a church like that. And I hate, I'm, 85% of our churches are dependent on ladies. If you're too much of a big shot and a bad butt, I'll say it that way, to get a prayer life and read your Bible, take, just take a seat. Hello? Ah, I hate it when I say that. It's time for men to quit running around barking orders and just read your Bible and get to prayer life. You get on fire. You get spirit filled. Let God lead you. You want to lead everybody? Let God lead you first. That way you're leading the right way instead of astray. Let me tell you the danger. I told the Bible study team last night. Team group. You need to pray a prayer that God, God will keep you from ever being deceived. Because if you're deceived, you won't know it. And quit thinking you know this word. I've been reading it for 36 years and I've learned stuff today. If you're not Holy Ghost filled speaking in other tongues, don't talk about it. You're not saved. You're not in the kingdom of God. Those are the prerequisites. The Bible says you can't call him Lord without the Holy Ghost. That's what the word is. This is not the teaching of this church. That is the teaching of the Bible. Therefore, this church teaches it. We are not a denomination. We are a church that is believed. You don't put a denomination on this church. We're a Bible church. How about that? Watch she stand fast in the faith. Some of you are standing fast in your opinion, and it's going to cost you in the face. Quit you like men. That's act like a man, a godly man, not a male. We got plenty of males. Males go out there and sire a bunch of children, but don't show up to be a dad. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That's why we want men in here that stand up and help children that are not their own. That they come in here and they act like pillars, that they're going to be godly men. More, more, they're in the word. They're in the altars. They're praying through. They're praying. I want some dads around here praying with kids. I'm glad. Take them fishing, but take them to the altar too. Take them out on a Friday night and go have some fun with them with these youth. Take them to an altar on a Sunday. You're good at telling them a lot of stuff what to do, but are you showing them how you do it? 
Be strong. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Real men love Jesus. Real men say no to all that junk out there. Let all your things be done with charity. I beseech you, brethren, you know the house of Stephanus, that is, is the first fruits of Acacia, that they have addicted themselves to the ministry of the saints. Some of us are so addicted. You've got your proclivity, you've got your habit. All that some of, that some of you would hold on to God like you do your cell phone. Who was it the other day that freaked out because they lost their cell phone? He about lost his cookies over that. I'm not picking. And that's all of us. All of us. I have the dumb thing in my hand and I'm looking for it. I'm on the phone talking to someone. Hey, but hold on, man. I can't find my phone. I wish some of us would hold on to God like we do our coffee. Get mad. Get, make sure you get up in prayer as much as you know you got to get up and get that caffeine. I may, hear, I may feel that one when I get home. I'm not, I'm not, look, I'm not picking, but we are, our first birth worked so hard to kick Jesus out of our lives. And our, I'm going to tell you something right here, right now. We should have the power of God moving in here that we lay hands on the sick and they do recover. Because we ain't meandering in here and finding a place to sit down during prayer. But we're seeking God. We're knocking on heaven's door that the preacher, I don't care if it's me or any of these other men, will hear from God and there will be flames of fire, ministers of flames of fire, like the Bible says. And there's fire in the pulpit because there's fire in the pew. Yes, amen. Yes, amen. We got to addict ourselves, addict ourselves. One of the greatest shames is how addicted the world is to its stuff and how casually reaching Jesus in church. That you submit yourselves unto such and to everyone that helpeth with us and laboreth. Can I tell you, God wants your whole house. Not just a receptacle to plug in his power like some salesman showing a vacuum cleaner. When he said, behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. That ought to make me question, where's that at in my life? If it's been given to me, what's in my hands instead of it? Notwithstanding this, rejoice not. In other words, that's an everyday thing for a saint of God. Rejoice not that the spirits are subject to me, but rather rejoice because your names are written. And you know what our focus is? I want to live in a way I can go to heaven from right now. Yes, amen. Amen. Confidence that my spouse can go to heaven from right now. Yes. That my children are going to heaven from yes. right now. Oh, that those around me know how to go to heaven from right now because I'm walking, talking, breathing, saying that God committed to the kingdom. My second birth is more important and gives me an opportunity to change what my first birth would have cost me. And I heard with a loud voice saying in heaven, now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ for the accuser of our brethren is cast down. I want to get that, I want to get the stuff out of my life that the accuser can use. Which accused them before God day and night and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. 
Don't let what happened to you be your label. You're not that because you went through it. You went through it to be something else. That's your testimony. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I'm not lost, I'm found. I know what I'm doing here. I once was blind, but now I see. I see where I'm going here. I know, I got a second birth. I'm in a new family. We're focusing on something else. My first birth was as simple as everyone else's. But I refuse to allow my second birth to meander along in meaningless existence that I only address on Sundays and Wednesdays. When I know that God right now was looking, and I want to open this altar right now, God right now was looking for someone to do a great work in the kingdom. The Bible says his eyes go to and fro, up and down these, these, these aisles and through these chairs, looking to show himself strong on behalf of them whose heart is perfect. 